Good morning, I'm Jaden Jefferson, and welcome to Community Focus on this Sunday. This week, Republican State Senator Teresa Gavron of District 2 announced her run to represent Ohio's 9th Congressional District. But that announcement did not come without questions, as Gavron didn't live in the district up until this year. This morning, I'm joined by one of the many raising questions, David Pepper, former chairman of the Ohio Democratic Party. I do want to note I reached out to Gavron's campaign to have her appear in Community Focus today, but I was told that she was not available for an interview this week. Well, I'd say my biggest concern is that Marcy Kaptur is, is an incredible public servant and has been for a long time for not just Toledo and the region, but the whole state. So uh, my number one concern is what a setback it would be if she were ever replaced by anybody. She's a real star and she no one knows Ohio better. No one champions better for Ohio. So I, I don't care where her opponent lives or what she stands for or whoever else might run. The bottom line is um, it would just be a bad idea to replace Marcy Kaptur with anybody. She's, she is, uh, most people in this country would love to have a congressperson as effective as she is. But when it, when it comes to Senator Gavarone, I do think the whole thing is very strange. I mean, first of all, she's been in charge of the committee drawing these districts. So it's very odd, and I'd say clearly a conflict of interest. She, she maybe should have disclosed the fact that she was thinking about running for Congress before she took on the assignment of drawing the districts. It's it, gerrymandering's bad enough. Uh, it's already conflict of interest. This seems even worse. And then it's also just sort of bizarre that she's changing her address at the last second. I think she registered a vote at this location the same day she announced her campaign. I don't think that's gonna impress anybody. Bottom line though, whatever the reason, whoever the person is, uh, she's, she doesn't, um, you know, hold a candle to Marcy Kaptur in terms of someone who's going to make a difference for this part of the state and the whole state. What do you think the impact of these redrawn districts will mean for Ohio Democrats? You know, I, what the, my number one thing is I actually think that these will probably not be upheld in court. So I think we're going to be watching for months to, to see what they ultimately look like. I mean, Teresa Gavron may have to move again, let's put it that way, because the district, um, the, the the constitution was changed by this decisive vote of the voters twice. Uh, the language is pretty clear that you can't draw a map that's unduly partisan or unduly favors or disfavors an incumbent or a candidate. And this congressional map, which I think would either be 13 Republicans and two Democrats or 12 Republicans, and three Democrats, that just is laughable. Honestly, it, it'd be laughable if it weren't so serious. But in terms of a matter of the law, I don't think, I, I, it's hard for me to see how any court upholds this absurd map. So I think what's gonna happen is this is gonna play out for some time. We're gonna have a number of months. And I think this district that, that is the ninth and, and up there, I think it's probably gonna change. Uh, just like the one where I'm sitting in, in Hamilton County is probably gonna change. There's one in Akron where they split Summit County right down the middle. There are a number of districts where I think they really were were greedy in trying to help themselves. I my guess is those will change. Now I still think Marcy Kaptur, like a lot of others, will have a real election. But but it, I think the the case will, will work its through through the courts and the come months, and then we'll see what the maps ultimately look like. The city of Toledo was one of the cities that was able to stay in the same district, so everyone was in the same place in the city of Toledo. So what was your reaction to? That? Yeah. My reaction to that is thank you to the voters. The, the voters voted for that. I mean, one of, the I, one of the ironic things right now is that the voters changed the constitution to make some clear rules. And some of the, the senators like Gavro are trying to take credit for what the voters actually told them to do. So there is, you know, Toledo and Cincinnati are less split because the voting, the, the mandate in the new law of the state requires that. But make no mistake, they did everything they could within the new rules to still rig the districts in their favor. And that's why, again, Ohio voters in the last 10 years have voted like mid 50s for Republicans, mid 40s for Democrats. That should be a map that's, you know, in a normal year, eight Republicans and seven Democrats. 13 2 is ridiculous. 12. 3 is ridiculous. They they they're not it's not defensible. So even though there are new rules that kept them from splitting Toledo and Cincinnati, uh, they've still really done a number on Ohio voters and that's why I think 
there, there's obviously already ca two cases that have been filed. And I think it's hard for me to see how these current maps will be struck down. But to the extent there's anything better in these maps than the current maps, that's the voters who with 75% of the vote voted for that. It has nothing to do with the politicians. You know, Teresa Gavron is a great example. Like she, she, they did everything they could on that Senate map where I'm seeing in Hamilton County, my county got split three different ways. Why? To try and protect an incumbent who otherwise would lose. Uh, Teresa Gavron was right in the middle of that. And, and, and then obviously she, the whole time she was doing this, she was herself thinking about running. So it just is really tainted and I think the court in the end will have the, 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 the uh, say, my guess is we'll strike it down. And then there's going to be a back and forth for some time. And then we'll see how it all shakes out. But, but again, Teresa Gavron may have to move again. That'd be one irony of this whole thing. David Pepper, former chairman of the Ohio Democratic Party. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks. Take care.